Welcome everyone to the Arundel Festival of Literature's Kidlit Week. It's very exciting to be able to bring you these events by Zoom webinar. We have six of our local schools watching today, so I'll just say a quick hello to all of you and pitch you all waving back at me. So first of all, let's say good morning to Arundel Primary School. Good morning to Glapthorne Primary School. Hello to Polbrook Primary School. Welcome to Laxton Junior School. Hello to Titchmarsh Primary School. And last but not least, welcome to Stanion Primary School. Today we have a wonderful author illustrator joining us called Stephen Lenton. He's best known for drawing the wonderful pictures in the Shifty McGifty series written by Tracy Corduroy. However, he has also written his own picture books and worked with plenty of other authors. Please welcome Stephen Lenton to Aundel and let's find out more about him and his books. Welcome Stephen. Hello everyone, thank you very much Helen for that beautiful introduction. I'm so glad to be part of your festival. This is fantastic because obviously as we know it's such a weird time just now there aren't a lot of festivals going on so it's fantastic to be here. Great. Um, I feel a bit nervous actually. I haven't done this for such a long time so um, thank you so much for inviting me along. Thank you. So guys yes as Helen mentioned you might know me from some of my other books. Um, Helen kindly mentioned Shifty Me Gifty and Slippery Sam, who you might know. Um, I also do smaller fiction titles of these uh, guys as well. Uh, the author, Tracy Corduroy, she visited the Oundle Festival. Um, so she's, uh, she's been with you, you might know her as well. And, and so they're two rubber dogs, so you might know those. Also, I do other books such as Let's Find Fred, which is a funny panda character. <gasps> And this cover has moving eyes on the cover. That one's quite fun. And also books, there's Dinosaurs Don't Draw. So basically, if you like any kind of animal, there's probably a Stephen Lenton book, Plug Plug, that you might quite like. Dinosaurs, robber dogs, what's not to love? Pandas with moving eyes. And also, oh, if you like scary villains as well, <gasps> she's not too scary, don't worry. She, <laughs> Cruella de Vil from The 101 Dalmatians, I did a lovely version of that with an author called Peter Bentley. So there is something for everyone at the Stephen Lenton shop. <laughs> but today, now today, this is a really strange book. When the publisher asked me to draw this book, now some of you might have questions um, at the end of this session about making books, how it works, what is a publisher, what's an author, what's an illustrator. Um, uh, I will tell you all later, but this book came into my, into my inbox in my email and I thought, what a strange story. I don't know if I can illustrate this um, because, yeah, I mainly do the pictures in the books and this one was a real challenge. And what I'm going to do, first of all, I'll tell you a bit more about it, but why don't we start with a nice story time and I'm going to read you this really strange but lovely story by Peter Bentley. Uh, so you should be able to see, there you go, there's a larger picture of the book. It is called Octopus Shocktopus. Even the title is strange, isn't it? And there you can see on the cover, there is an octopus flying down through the sky and he is scaring the poor seagull um, who's also on the cover. And there's a kite in there. So why is he flying through the sky? Shall we find out? Let's turn the page and have a look. Now, first of all, you can see we are in a sleepy seaside harbory village. There's a yellow windmill, there's a lovely pink house, there's a greenhouse, there is not a greenhouse, greenhouse. Um, there's even look, can you see next to the lighthouse, the tall red object in the middle? There is even a house made out of a ship. So you sort of straight away get a little glimpse of this little community. Now all the houses are quite separate and there's no one there, no one having fun at the moment. So let's see if the octopus can help out. Let's turn the page and have a look. So this is called the title page and this gives us another glimpse at where the octopus is about to land. So as you can see, he's going to land on the blue house that we saw at the fur in the first picture. So let's turn the page and start the story. One day we found an octopus had come to live on top of us 
our neighbour, Mrs Antibus, said, I don't like that octopus. An octopus just looks all wrong. An octopus does not belong. Oh, that's not very nice, is it? Now look, what can you see? There is a dog. Mrs Antibus has got a cat. The dog doesn't look too sure about this cat. You want to keep an eye on the dog and the cat throughout this story because there's a little plot of what's going on with them. And the little girl holding her teddy, she looks quite happy to have an octopus on her house, doesn't she? And the little boy, the mum is not so sure and nor is the dad. Notice it's the adults that aren't too sure, but the children are really excited. Right, let's turn the page. <sighs> she went and called the fire brigade. They couldn't shift it. So it stayed. Look, they're trying to hose away the octopus, but the octopus is too big and strong and isn't having any of it. But Mrs. Antipas is not pleased. Let's see what happens next. At first, it sat there looking bored. It dozed a bit and sometimes <laughs> snored. Do you know anyone that snores in your family? Does your mum or dad or one of your animals? I've got a pet. Now, he's not here today. I would have shown you he's called Big Ear Bob, and he is a very snorry French bulldog. So it dozed a bit and sometimes <sniffs> snored. But when our friends came round that day, we asked it, hmm, would you like to play? We started off by playing catch, and then we had a football match. Imagine that, all eight of us against a giant octopus. Gosh, what happens next? Later on, we had more fun. We jumped its eight legs one by one. It gave us all a jolly ride. It also made a perfect slide. And soon it was quite plain to see how very useful it could be to have our friend on top of us, our special giant octopus can you imagine guys out there having your own octopus look it's a slide it can be it can be anything you want it to be even so there's the fisher lady and she's fishing off the end of one of its tentacles as well it looks really fun doesn't it imagine right what happens next on mornings that were bright and fine it made a handy washing line there's dad hanging out the washing it dug the garden built a shed and helped to paint the whole fence red. My kite got tangled in our tree. Our octopus just pulled it free. It rescued Gracie's teddy too, the time she flushed it down the loo. From that time on, it smelt of poo. <gasps> he said poo. That's everyone's favourite page and I don't know why. So look, can you see what's going on? There's all the washing. Oh gosh, there's some knickers and pants and things on that washing line. Don't look for too long. And look at the dog and the cat. Can you see what they're doing? I think the cat is sticking its tongue out at the dog, which is really, really annoying the dog. So no wonder he's quite barky. And yeah, look, he's rescued the kite. Now, Mrs. Antrobus is holding her nose, but she's sticking around with a cup of tea. So maybe Mrs. Antrobus is changing her mind about this octopus. Let's find out. Oh, it's turned to autumn now on the next page. It swept the leaves. It cleared the snow. It pushed the car to make it go. Look, can you imagine? We had snow not so long ago, didn't we? It feels like an age ago now. And they're building snowmen there. So all the community is making more of their surroundings and they're all coming and chatting to each other. Have you noticed it's a bit busier, this island, since the octopus arrived? And on the next page, people came from miles to see our octotastic <gasps> Christmas tree. Look at that, can you imagine? Now that would win some prizes if, if you put that up in your neighbourhood, wouldn't it? Do you have one of those neighbourhoods where everyone gets a bit competitive and puts lights up outside? Um, I think this octopus would definitely win that round, wouldn't it? And you can see in the background, over there on the left, you can see an, octop uh, an octopus, a helicopter bringing some tourists. And also there is a big ship as well, bringing lots of people from all around the world to come and see their amazing octopus. Okay, next page. We all adored our octopus who'd come to live on top of us and even, I told you, Mrs Antrobus grew fonder of our octopus, especially when it saved her hat and rescued pumpkin pie, her cat. 
Oh, now what I didn't tell you at the beginning of this session is after I finish reading the story, we are going to draw some of the characters in the book. We are going to draw the octopus and we are going to draw the dog. And if we've got time, we're also going to draw pumpkin pie, the cat. Everybody said to us, we wish we had an octopus, except the village baker Sid, can you see him at the bottom, who said, hmm, I'd rather have a squid. There's always one, isn't there? So what happens? Oh. One day we found no octopus was living right on top of us. Where had it gone? We all felt glum. We missed our massive eight leg chum. Look at the dog and the cat. Even the dog and the cat are now friends. And the cat is saying, don't worry, doggy, it'll be all right. We know we're sad, but things will be okay. Let's turn the page and find out what happened next. <gasps> Can't go on forever. But in the night we heard a bump. It woke us up and made us jump. Yikes, we said, what can it be? We quickly ran outside to see something quite spectacular, miraculous, tentacular, can you guess? Our own gigantic octopus was living back on top of us. Phew, but that's not where this story ends. Now look at the dog and the cat. This is my favourite illustration. Can you see the dog and the cat both cuddling the octopus? And Mrs Antipas is very happy with another cup of tea. She must go to the loo a lot, Mrs Antipas. <gasps> so that's not where this story ends. Our octopus had fetched its friends. That's right, fetched his friends. Look, now we don't know. So I still think this is a strange <laughs> book because we don't know where they come from, but we don't need to know, do we? And if you have a nice look at the picture, you can see that everyone is going to have their octopus. Um, the lighthouse keeper has got theirs. And also even Sid, the village baker, got his squid. Do you see the squid on the windmill is a different shape to the rest. So that's how we know he's a squid, it's a different shape to octopus. So everyone has got something. And if you look at the final page, you will see that they are all interacting and the community is busy and happy and they are all getting on and Mrs Antrobus is knitting with her knitting octopus as well. How fantastic. So you might want to think later on maybe at school or at home what kind of octopus you would like. If you had an octopus on your house what would you like yours to help you do? Maybe you would love it to play football. Maybe you'd want it to play Nintendo or something. I love playing Nintendo. I can't stop playing Mario at the moment. I should be getting on with my work. But yeah, have a think about what octopus you would like. And speaking of which, why don't we draw our octopus? Shall we do that? Let's get on to some drawing, okay? So, you should all have, ooh, hopefully you will all have a uh, piece of paper. Ideally you want three pieces of paper, um, but you can always draw on the back, don't worry, it's not important. As long as you've got a piece of paper, something to lean on. If you're at a table, then fantastic. Now ideally I would be drawing down here on my table, so my drawing would be all perfect, but it's tricky doing that when you're on a Zoom call. So what I'm going to do is use the book as my easel and I'm going to draw with you here. So actually it's quite nice because it's a bit more interactive. If, I, if you could just see my hand doing this, it's just not quite as fun. So we're going to have 20 minutes or so of drawing. Now take your time. This is not a competition. This is fun and we are going to do it step by step. It's going to be nice and easy. You do not have to worry at all. Um, and if you're watching this later on, I think you might be able to pause, rewind, etc. So do not worry about that. Now, I'm going to lean on this book because that's a better page size. There we go. Now, our octopus has two large eyes, doesn't he? So let's start with those. It's always a good place to start. And he's going to be falling through the sky like he is in the book. So we are going to draw one eye in the middle of our page and slightly to the left. We're going to draw one circle like that. And we're going to leave a gap because his eyes are quite wide apart. So we're going to leave a gap and draw another large circle. That could be anything, but it could be two large giant nostrils, couldn't it at the moment? Who knows? Now we're going to draw two more circles. We're going to keep it simple, I promised you. Now we're going to draw one 
like that and one like that. They're slightly towards the centre of those first circles that we drew. And we're going to colour those ones in. They're his pupils. Now, there's a lot of pupils watching this video and there is two more pupils staring back at you. So that's a good start to our octopus. I hope you can all see that okay. You should be all right. Now we're going to draw his head around those eyes. So we want to draw a nice arc shape to make a large head. So we're going to draw an arc that goes up and round and down. Up and round and down. All right, simple so far. So we've got four circles and one upside down you or a horseshoe shape. A horseshoe shape. Now, I promised you it was going to be simple, but it does get a little bit trickier. We've got to make it look really good, haven't we? So we're going to draw the tentacles. Now, how many tentacles does an octopus or a squid have? It's the same amount as a spider would have legs. Do you know? I bet you're all shouting seven. You are absolutely wrong. It is eight. So I'm joking. I know you all knew it was eight. I know you're a clever bunch. You're a clever bunch. So what we're going to do, we're going to draw the first tentacle and it comes down and round and up like that. So it's a curly squiggly line. Okay. Now it looks a bit too thin, doesn't it? It looks like a stick insect leg. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to draw from the tip of it, so it's thinner at the tip, we're going to draw down and out and make it thicker as we come down, round and up towards the middle, like that. Now again, it doesn't matter. Ideally you want it to be thinner towards the top of the tentacle. If it's not, do not worry, it is your octopus, okay? And also what I'd like you to think of at this stage is a name for your octopus, okay? This one hasn't got a name in the story. You might want to think about what it should be called. Maybe, you know, Fred or something. It can't be Sid because he's already in the story. Now, what we're going to do is do exactly the same, but on the other side. So we're going to draw a line up and round and curved up. And do the same again. We want to start at that tip and bring it all all the way down and try and meet that line that we drew first underneath his head. Now it's taking shape isn't it? You can now tell actually that it is an octopus can't you? It could be an octopus with missing tentacles right now. We're going to add more detail later, we're going to add the things that are called the suckers that go all the way along the octopi's tentacles. Okay you're doing well so far and I can't see them but I'm looking forward to seeing them online later um, hopefully your schools will be able to put them on Twitter or something, I'll be able to share them and I'll be able to see all your drawings, which is very exciting. It's the best bit of being an illustrator. Now what we're going to do, we're going to draw, we need to draw some behind these ones. So we're going to draw exactly like we drew this one. From about here, we're going to draw another tentacle line that comes up, a curly line that comes up. And start from the top and work all the way down, making it fatter towards the base like that. And we'll do the same on the other side. We're going to draw our curly line down and round to about there. And starting at the top, you got it. Thinner at the top, fatter at the base, something like that. It doesn't matter where they join up, as long as they join back to the body, you are absolutely fine. Now I haven't got time to colour mine in because colouring takes a while, doesn't it? So I'd love to see yours later if they could be coloured in. The one in the book is bright neon orange that doesn't really show up um, on the TV screen. So if you've got a neon felt tip or a neon marker, oh, that would be perfect for this octopus. Now he's got one, two, three, four. So we must be halfway there, hey? Let's draw some more. Let's draw two little ones here. Let's make it easier. Let's draw one line coming up there. And then one line coming down here. Okay, give my left arm a rest as it's starting to ache already. And we've got two more drawings after this. See, if you can't go to the gym, <laughs> what are you supposed to do? Now let's draw another one on this side, <laughs> uh, like this. I should have invested in an easel, shouldn't I? But the thing is, if I've got an easel, it's too far away from the screen. 
So a line that side, and again, we're going to bring it down and round. So that must mean we've only got two more to draw, and we should have a bit of room either side. If you haven't got room either side, you can just do two more behind his head or something. But we've got a little bit of room here to do one there. like that and that would because that comes there we would see it come around the back of these ones something like that okay and then the last one and then we get onto the detail we'll do one last line coming down like that and start at the tip thinner at the top fatter at the bottom i'm a bit fatter at the bottom um during lockdown i need really need to go swimming there we go that is the main shape of our octopus. I'll hold it there just in case you're finishing off some bits and bobs. Now what we need to do is, he hasn't got a mouth. This was something that we decided he shouldn't have a mouth because then he'd be too expressive and maybe he'd look like he was going to talk. Um, and he doesn't need to talk, he's all very expressive with his eyes and the positions of his tentacles, etc. So, um, he has eyebrows though, and they are very expressive. Here's a top tip when you're an illustrator and you're drawing a character. If you're drawing a nice kind character, like the octopus, then look, his eyebrows are up here and he looks all happy and jolly, but look at these eyebrows. If I was drawing Cruella de Vil again, can you see what angle her eyebrows are? Well, I nearly drew, <laughs> could have drawn them on then. Um, they're really down um, and very, very frowny. That's a good way if you want your characters to look angry or mean, draw the eyebrows coming down like that. But is our octopus angry and mean? No. Well, you might choose yours to be. It's quite early on a Wednesday, so he might be a bit like, mm, where's my cup of tea? But let's do him happy. So I'm going to draw an eyebrow going up, another eyebrow going up, like that. Look, he looks all nice and surprised and shocked. Shocktopus, octopus, octopus, shocktopus. Now what we're gonna, what we need to do is, I'm not gonna draw all of them, but he also has, like I mentioned, these suckers. And they start off, they're just circles. They start off like this towards the bottom of each tentacle, like this. Okay, so draw quite large ones, this size. Um, until it starts curving up. So just draw, they're all the same size circles. But then what you need to do, because the tentacles get thinner towards the tip, we need those circles to get smaller and smaller. So just make them, so do some medium sized ones until the next curve, that size. It really makes them look like an octopus now, doesn't it? I love adding the detail. And then obviously they get smaller and smaller towards the top, and they might just be dots towards the top, like that. So if you do that, I'm gonna quickly do that here, do, 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 so I can show you what it looks like. It's just quicker for me to do it like this. You'll just have to put it with the side of my face for a minute. I'm in Brighton, by the way. Has anyone been to Brighton? Um, I'm right by the sea, and actually, the village that you saw at the beginning and the end of the book is based on the, um, the huts down on Brighton and Hove. Um, oh, sorry, I just, <laughs> I just put my elbow on my mouse there, not a real mouse. I have to hasten. I think, am I, am I here? Yes, I'm all right. I had just hear, heard a click and then looked up and I disappeared as I was telling you about Brighton. So look, I've done one full side. That's what it should look like. So yes, so I was talking about Brighton before I elbowed my mouse. And um, he, uh, uh, Brighton is a brilliant place to draw, actually. It's full of beautiful architecture. It's got the pier, it's got fairground rides, everything. So that's another top tip. If you are ever stuck, um, if you're asked to do a project at school and you're stuck for things, Things, look around you, go out and draw something. I know it's a bit tricky to go out all the time at the moment, but you'll be able to soon. If you've got a pet like I have, why don't you draw your dog? Why don't you draw your cat? Draw anything and it might just inspire you to get that project going. You just never know. Now, what we could also draw is some lines because he's falling through the sky. I think we could draw some action lines coming down like that, see that makes him look like he's going through the sky. And do you know what else would make him look like he was in the sky? This are also on the cover. 
some clouds. Now, to draw a cloud, this is how I draw a cloud. It's quite simple. You do a line like that, draw a line, and then just do some wiggly lines on the top like this. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. And as long as it comes back down to that line, you're onto a winner. So I'll draw another line over here like that. And then wiggle, 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 little wiggle there, like that. So there you go. That is how to draw an octopus flying through the sky. Remember to put your name on. I'm going to put my, oh, not very well done signature. There you go. Make sure you put your name on because um, if you share, if you're able to share, no pressure, but if you're able to share, it'd be great to see your name as well. And I can see um, who you are and what you've drawn, how lovely that would be. Now, I was just speaking of pets. And as I said, Big Ear Bob isn't with me today. He's gone for a day trip in London. Isn't he lucky? How are we doing for time? We are okay. So what I would like to do now is show you how to draw the little dog from the book. Now, the little dog is called Holly because it's based on a dog that I used to have, a little Jack Russell. And if you look at the beginning of the book again, it says, in memory of my little rescue dog, Holly, who lives on in the pages of this book. Oh, so Holly's not with us any longer, but she does live on in the page of this book, which is another reason why I love sharing this story with everybody. So if you've got another piece of paper, fantastic. If not, don't worry, just draw it on the back of your octopus. Gotta save those trees, haven't we? So, and if you're going to save trees, I guess don't use any paper, don't do any drawing, but we've got to do some drawing. It's recycled paper. We are all alright. So, we're going to draw a little Jack Russell. Uh, the octopus was mainly made up of circles and round shapes, wasn't it? Loopy lines, curved lines. The Jack Russell is going to be, it's quite triangular because uh, dog's ears and noses are quite triangular. So let's start with the nose, okay? We are going to draw a triangle, again, towards the centre of our paper. We're going to draw a triangle with the point aiming down the way. Colour that in. That's the only bit of colouring I'm doing, the, the nose and the eyes. It's a shame because... Um, It'd be nice to do a, a speedy fast forwarding of, of what they look like coloured, but we haven't got all day, have we, unfortunately? So nice to be with you though. Now we're going to draw his snout, which is just a little line coming down, and three whiskers either side. Well, they're the sort of the holes where the whiskers come out of. I don't know what they're called. I sometimes call them freckles, because sometimes we get freckles in the sunshine, sunshine, don't we? Some people have already got freckles all year round, but yeah. So three little freckles either side of this triangle and the line coming down. Then we need to draw his eyes. His eyes are really simple. They're just two little dots. One like that and one like that. Look, he's already starting to look quite cute. Quite cute. Now we need to draw two more triangles. We're going to draw one up here like that with a slightly rounded top. Looks a bit like a Trivial Pursuit piece. I'm saying that because I've just bought Trivial Pursuit because it's my friend's birthday over the weekend and I bought her Trivial Pursuits. There we go. <laughs> now we need to draw another triangle, this side, like that. Two Trivial Pursuit pieces or wedges of cheese or pieces of cake. All right, now they look a bit funny, don't they? They're hovering in the middle of nowhere. Um, so let's draw, dead easy, a line in between those two. Now we can see that that's his forehead at the top and uh, they are his ears. You've obviously guessed they're his ears. Now we're gonna come down from one ear and go round uh, and up towards the other ear. Mine's a bit wonky. You'll probably do a better job. I'm drawing from the side, which is always quite tricky. But you get the idea, and dogs' faces and dogs' are, um, ears and things aren't symmetrical, are they? I'm sure they're not. Well, this one's not anyway. So there's a cute look. You could just leave to that. It's a very cute little dog face. We need to give him some eyebrows. So he's looking happy, or a bit puzzled as well. So he's got two little up eyebrows, not like Cruella de Vil. Now we need to draw his body. 
Now we're going to draw him from the front. So we're going to draw a line that comes down and round and out. Like that. And same this side, down and round and out. A bit like a Cluedo piece. Oh, it's all very board gamey this morning. Anyone would think I've been on Amazon looking at board games <laughs> instead of writing my new book. Um, right, so that's, that's the front, that's his neck, obviously, and then this is going to be his bum at the back. It'll make more sense in a minute. Because only little, so we've got little body. Now we're gonna draw his paws. So we want to draw one line coming down and another line coming down, like that. And then we join those up with a curved line, which makes, and two little dots, which makes his front paw. Right, looks a bit odd at the moment. It'll make sense in a second, because we're gonna do the same this side. Like two lines coming down, two little lines to make his little toes or claws. Dogs, you don't say dog toes, do you? It's a good job I'm not a vet. Yes, your dog's toes look all right, Mrs. Johnson. He hasn't got any toes, Mr. Smith. Um, now we need to draw his paws on the outside. So just do a little line like that on the outside and that's him hunched down, sitting down with his back legs sticking out. Then he needs some more detail. He needs a tail sticking up like that. And to make it look like it's wagging, we're gonna draw two little lines either side. You know, like we drew on the octopus to make him look like he's going Well this, because he's wagging his tail, if you draw two little lines either side of his tail, it looks like he's wagging, so you know he's happy. Now he needs a collar as well, so we're going to draw a little collar, just two lines on his little neck, and a circle for the tag on his collar, or her collar, I keep saying he, it's terrible isn't it, I always think dogs are he's and cats are she's, I don't know why, I must stop that, um, and because the dog's name is Holly, I'm going to put a little H on her tag. There we go, and that is a nice little way. Oh, put a bit of ground. I didn't put any ground on the octopus because um, he was flying through the sky. Put some ground, so maybe some grass, like that, so it looks like he's sitting on, she's sitting on, still doing it, she's sitting on something. And remember again, pop your name on that. I'll do this. <laughs> and there's your little doggy. That's Holly from Octopus Shoptopus. I can't wait to see your drawings. It's been really fun doing this. I haven't done it for a little while. I've got my draw along videos, draw along a Lenten um, on YouTube that you can always use. There's a new one on today and it's how to draw a spider actually from <gasps> Shifty Me Gifty and Slippery Sand. So if you like drawing spiders, there's lots more drawings you could do. But I think we'll finish today before we have some questions by drawing a cat. So you'll have three lovely drawings by the end of this session. I'm working you hard this morning, aren't I? But it's gonna be worth it at the end. It's a lot of drawing. I hope your left arm isn't taking like mine. Um, I must go swimming, I must go to the gym. So we're gonna draw the little cat. And can you remember what the cat was called? It's orange and it belongs to Mrs. Antrobus. That's right, it's pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie, and there is pumpkin pie in the tree. Okay, so this is our our last little drawing for the morning. Morning drawing. Now, the cat is quite a funny shape. It's quite a fat cat. But it's pumpkin pie. So we're gonna start, again, with two triangles, but a different kind of triangle. We're gonna go pointy up. Not down the way, pointy up. Alrighty. If you've got room on your bed, you could do it next. I drew my dog in the middle. If you did, then you might not have room. But if you drew your dog to the side, you might have room to put your dog and cat on the same page. So we've got a triangle going up and then we need um, a line going along and another triangle going up. There we go. It could be, if you turn it upside down, it could look like fangs. Oh, oh. Doesn't really look like fangs, does it? Like. Anyway, or a broken staple. Oh, when you're trying to get a staple out. Oh, <laughs> oh the memories. Um, there we go. Now, this side, we are going to bring it down and round to make the cat's bum. And I said the cat was quite large. So you can see that's, the, that's going to be the cat's bum. Pumpkin pie's bottom. Like that. 
and then the front curves down a little bit in the similar sort of way like that similar angle goes like that you can kind of tell it's going to be a cat can't you it's funny um it's good to have a good silhouette so the the the, the main block the main shape of a of anything is called a silhouette and if you might if you've watched peter pan or read peter pan you'll know all about silhouettes and another top illustrate, illustration tip is when you're designing a cast of characters for your book or a project, you want them all to look different. So you can see that already looks different to that. And obviously the octopus looks very different to this little cat. Now we're going to draw the face and the face is a little circle around there for the nose. Alrighty. Now Let's do the eyes. I like to do the nose first in this one because it just lets you know where the eyes are going to go because they're more to the side. So one circle that side. Before you put the pupils in, I think characters always look a little bit scary because if you do that, it could be sort of a zombie cat, couldn't it? Take me to your tuna. There we go. That would be an alien cat, wouldn't it? Zombie cats can't talk, can they? They go. Meow, meow. I don't know. Have you ever seen a zombie cat? No, well, I might be right. Now we're going to do the pupils. <laughs> uh, one there. And one there. And that's a good start to our cat. He doesn't look like a zombie or an alien cat anymore, does he? Well, maybe. <laughs> I'm having fun. I don't know if anyone else is. Now let's draw the whiskers. Yes, because actually the cat, oh no, um, yeah, pumpkin, pumpkin pie definitely has whiskers. The dog doesn't have whiskers because whiskers make a dog look older somehow. Uh, but with a cat, you can't have a cat without whiskers. So one, two, three. Be bold with those lines. Because if you sort of go, uh, uh, um, it can look less whiskery. You want them to be sort of wispier on one side. And then do three the other side. One, two, three. It doesn't matter if one's shorter than the other, like mine just is, or if it goes over your eyes, it just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. Now, what we're gonna do next is do the legs. So here at the front, we're gonna draw a little line to make the front paw. And then we're gonna draw another line and another little paw, like that. It looks weird at the moment, but if I do this and draw another line, coming down, you can see that they're going to be the front paws. Now what we can do at this stage is draw a line all the way along from the bottom. Ooh, I went wonky in the middle. Just draw some more ground there and two little paws there. Can you see, draw all the way from the front of your paws all the way to its hind quarters. Very pointy bottom. But then we're going to draw the back leg and again it will just make sense so the back leg is just it's you just draw a number two not that kind of number two this kind of number two look number two like that so you are drawing a number two on the back of the cat but what you want to do is join that up the base of the number two to there and then put two more little claws there so that's a nice easy way of drawing a cat positioned like that isn't it it's nice if you can use just circles and triangles and squares and numbers and letters it makes it a lot easier now a bit like the octopi tentacles we want to draw a nice loopy long tail on our pumpkin pie so we're going to do a tail like that it goes up now instead of it being thinner towards the tip there we want it to be rounder and then go thinner towards um, pumpkin pie's bum so we're going to draw round and down and then get a bit thinner towards the base hopefully did we do it we did we did it well done now all that pumpkin pie is missing is a bit of pattern and her collar as well so we're going to draw a line for the collar it's a thinner collar than the dog's got and she's got a little bell little pinkly bell on her collar so just draw a circle with a line through it that doesn't mean it's wrong it means it's a bell <laughs> okay now to make it look like a tabby cat uh, we're going to draw some lines um, down the back 
like this, down onto the bum. And then we're going to draw a few on the back of its legs as well, like this. Do, do just little nice short marks with your pen or pencil, whatever you're using. And then also down the tail. So we want some nice, it's have been threes, I think. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. It's a waltz. One, it's a waltzing cat. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Do, 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 do. And there we go. There is pumpkin pie, your cat. Again, put a bit, of, put a bit more ground on. Uh, you can do a flower, maybe. So one, draw a circle. Flowers are easy. A circle and then... One, two, three, four, five, and a stick. Maybe some leaves at the bottom. Add a nice flower. And then I'll sign this one as well. And again, I'd love to see your, oh, I've forgotten its eyebrows. <gasps> now I haven't. There you go. There is Pumpkin Pie, Mrs. Antrobus's cat, okay. Now, I hope you've enjoyed doing those drawings and I really hope you enjoyed the story. And I think you might have some questions for me. We can talk about anything. If not, I can always talk about my other books or something. Um, but um, I think Helen might be back. Here she is with some questions about the event and about Octopus Shop to Bus. Hi, Helen. Hello, hello. Would you like to see my cat? I would love to see your cat. Uh, Let's see. Oh, oh, it's tricky, isn't it? Oh, oh up a bit. Oh, up a bit. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I love that you've used the colours. That's fantastic. That's brilliant. Well done, Helen. Thank you very much. Did you draw the octopus and the dog as well, or just the cat? Um, no, I've done the octopus. Oh, come on, let's see. Um, ooh, ooh, oh, 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 here oh. he comes. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, yours, is yours is much better than mine. It's brilliant. <laughs> I didn't do well, the dog, I was looking at the questions at that no, point. You're allowed because you're in charge. <laughs> right, we've got lots of wonderful questions from the oh, schools. Oh wow, okay. So, right, we'll start off with one from Stanion School and this is from Kieran and right. he says, how did you learn to illustrate? How did I learn to illustrate? Well, well, Kieran, that's a very good question. And it started at school. I just loved drawing um, my toys and I loved copying uh, the Beano comics, Dennis the Menace and Nasha. I used to love drawing them. So I used to, I started off by copying things when I was at primary school. Um, and then that comes in handy for when you're doing projects at school. And if you've got to draw something, I just think, oh, well, I've drawn Nasha, which is a dog from a comic. So I can draw kind of another kind of dog. Um, and then obviously you um, draw fruit and bowls of fruit when you're at school. You do all those kind of things. So the main thing is draw things that you really like drawing. So I used to draw my Transformers and Star Wars figures. I never used to play with my toys. I used to line them up and I used to draw them weirdly. So they're in pristine condition. So yeah, draw something that you like. Try not to draw things that you find boring because you will lose interest and not finish them. And then just keep practicing, keep drawing, keep a sketchbook with you if you're working on a project and you can just jot down ideas and little doodles of character ideas anytime on the go. Right, the next question is from Andal Primary. And Patrick says, what was the first book that you illustrated? <gasps> well, Patrick, the first book that I illustrated was Shifty McGifty and Slippery Sam which was a really good one because we've just finished working on the fifth picture book and there's going to be at least another picture book as well. So this was the first one um, and it did quite well, but you can sort of see now when I, when I draw now, it's quite, it's a bit simpler um, than I would do things now. Um, so you sort of grow again because I'm still practicing, even though I'm a professional, I'm still drawing and practicing and developing my style. So yeah, the very first one was Shifting Sam and that's nearly, it was not eight or nine years old now. So hopefully we're going to do something for its 10th anniversary in a year or so. Okay. Right, from Glapthorn Primary, Lily says, do you enjoy drawing or writing best? Oh, hello, Lily. That's a brilliant question because I'm just writing. I've got a new series coming out um, in a couple of months. and I think you'll love it because it's for everyone. It's sort of age five up, you know, five to nine. Um, so it's really good. And it's called Genie and Teeny. And it's all about a magical genie who's actually rubbish at making wishes. And it gets them into all kinds of trouble. It gets them kicked out of Genie World. And I'm writing the second book of that. 
Now, as an illustrator, once you've worked out where all the characters are going and how it's all going to work, and you're just colouring in, having a nice time, you can play music and you can listen to the radio in the background, which I love because I'm not very good with peace and quiet. But when you're writing, uh, uh, you cannot have any sound on at all. So I'm loving writing, but I'm not loving not listening to music. So I kind of like them both for different things. I do like that when you're writing, it's, it, you can make because I work with so many other authors and it's kind of their stories and I bring them to life with the illustrations. So it's really nice to be in charge of, the, of everything, writing and drawing. So I like them both equally, but if I had to choose one, I probably would choose illustrating. Okay. And um, one of the classes from Laxton Junior School, 1T, have asked, how many books have you illustrated in total? Oh. I do, do you know what? I don't, I've got some of them behind me. It's over 20. I think it's nearly, if you include, because I do Frank Cottrell Boyce's books and David Bedell and everything, if you include all of those, I think it's about 40. Wow. About 40 books altogether, which, which I've only been doing it for about eight years. So it's gone very quickly, 40 books. Yes, yeah, gosh. Quite a lot. Um, Arabella from Stanian School says, what was your favourite character to draw on colour? Hello Arabella, that's a really good question. Um, well, I do think, I've mentioned her already a couple of times, haven't I? It was a real honour to be asked to design a new Cruella de Vil, and so she was quite cool to design. Also quite tricky because they didn't want it to look like the Disney film, um, but they wanted her to look sort of quite fabulous and everything as well. So we got there in the end, um, and I could go to town on all her, like this, she's dressed as a peacock here, I, may, I wanted her to dress as a different animal because she's obsessed with animals and furs and feathers. So she dresses, um, when she comes down the stairs, she's dressed a bit like Bo Peep and she's got um, sheep all over her nighty. So that was really fun to design. And also I love designing the octopus because I never would have thought that I'd be doing an octopus book. So designing an octopus was really good fun. That was great. Okay, another question from Aundel Primary. Um, Tatia says, what was your favorite book growing up? Oh, Tatia, that's a brilliant question. Um, again, I think I've got it here. Uh, it's one that a lot of people say, but it really, really captured my imagination. And the Enchanted Wood series by Enid Blyton, I oh, absolutely yes. loved. Um, and my both my teacher and my parents had the big um, illustrated copies of the whole series. And we just went through them and through them and through them. Mm -hmm. The idea of having a magical world at the top of a tree that just span and changed and had baddies and goodies and all sorts of cakes and oh adventure I just thought it was fantastic yeah. which is funny because I, I didn't read any of Enid Blyton's other books I only read um, the Enchanted Wood titles so um, yeah I love those growing up definitely. Okay Seth from Glatform School says do you find drawing pictures easy because I find it hard? Hello Seth that's another good question I've already touched on that a bit I always say because people often say to me what's the most difficult thing to draw? And I always say, because it's true, the most difficult thing to draw is something that you haven't drawn yet. That's all it is, because as soon as you start studying something, like I said, it could be a glass of water, it could be a dog, it could be an apple, or something more exciting like a transformer or a toy. You, once you look at it and start observing it and start jotting down things about it, draw the head, oh, that's a bit wrong, I'll make a note of that, put that to one side, I'll draw the arm, oh, that's better. And you start to piece it together and you kind of remember it in your mind, the steps that you took to get to the correct way of drawing something for you. So you'll all come up with your own kind of style. So just it's just about practice. And that's why you must always choose something that you love to draw because it will make you want to practice. Right, quite a specific question now from Rosie oh. from Laxton Junior School. Do oh, you Rosie. draw butterflies and sausage dogs? <gasps> Rosie, do I draw butterflies and sausage dogs? Yes, I, I do. Funny enough, because in the Shifty and Sam books, there is a spider hidden on every page. And in Let's Find Fred, there is a butterfly on every page as well. I'll show you a couple. So if they're quite difficult to spot, in this one... There's a butterfly disguised as a bow tie because you have to find the, the. There's all sorts of things to find in this book, and the butterfly is one of them. So, I mean, the thing is, I say, oh yes, I'm really good at drawing butterflies, but I mean, it's two shapes really. They're quite simple butterflies. Oh, yeah. um, I've got a new book coming out again in June, and it's called How to Grow a Unicorn, and that's got a magical shop 
and but beautiful butterflies hover and fly around the shop. So yes, lots of butterflies in that one. And there's a sausage dog in Shifty McGifty and Slippery Sam. Um, um, I can't remember what his name is. Tracy's given all the dogs names, and I'm t I think it's, it might be Hercules. Uh, yeah, so there's a the sausage dog. Sometimes he's on all fours, and sometimes he stands up. Um, so yeah, I love. I always wanted a sausage dog. I haven't got one yet, but maybe one day. Well, perhaps we'll question. not mention that in front of Bob. <laughs> uh, no, don't, don't tell him. It's a good job he's not here right now. Uh, um, Felix from <laughs> Glapthorn School says, do you write stories for people you know? Oh, Felix, that's an interesting question. Well, I would, I, well, yes, I guess so, because some people that read and look at my illustrated books, um, I do know. Um, I don't write them specifically for anyone because what you have to do when you're an author or an illustrator, you do have to earn some money. So you have to make books that a lot of people will like um, so that more people will buy them. So then you can make more books um, and get better and better at it, hopefully. So, yeah, in a way, I do write books for um, people that I know, um, but hopefully mainly for people that I don't know and will get to know through the books. Okay, Great so. question. <laughs> Emmy from Stanion School says, when you were at school, did you like writing stories? I did. When I was at primary school, I absolutely adored writing stories. And I used to do comic strips and sort of graphic novel -y kind of things with images and text together. But what happened when I was at secondary school was we didn't do any creative writing. As soon as I went to secondary school, it we didn't do any creative writing at all and it was all just studying texts so I got out of the habit of writing and I, and I lost the love for it because I sort of forgot how to do it um so yeah another thing is if you if you ever if, if you end up in the same situation as me make sure you keep reading and make sure you just keep jotting things down and writing down ideas and writing your own stories because I stopped from the beginning of secondary school till I finished university I didn't read for quite a long time and I because I, I just fell out of love with reading and writing and I've only discovered it again over the last sort of 15-20 years and I wish I'd just carried on mm. very naughty of me uh, this is this is a good question and I think it's quite an important mm. one because it's it's sort of about not giving up and it's from Lottie at Stanion School right. and she says do you make lots of mistakes when you're drawing and if so do you start again well, Lottie, if I'm working in my sketchbook, so um, using pencil, I, I use my sketchbook to work things out. So I wouldn't start again. I would just um, move on to the next page. So, yeah, so in a way I would start again. I I'd never rub anything out because I think it's important to remember what doesn't work as well as what does work. So I think you should start again to a certain degree, but never get um annoyed or frustrated if you can help it if it doesn't go right first time um, and don't instantly get your eraser out if something goes wrong just think right that didn't quite work but i'll leave that there and i'll just move on to this next bit and let's see what happens um, because some days you can just draw things quite easily um, and certain times of day like i work i draw better in the mornings and I write better in the evenings which works out quite well so I draw for most of the day and then when it gets to sort of four or five o'clock I'll start writing um, so you need to find your own <clears throat> your own pace and your own way of doing things but yes it's difficult drawing and um, sometimes you need to start again but never forget what you did before so don't be quick to rub everything out is my advice yeah, yeah. so Otto from Laxton Junior School says do you write or draw comics um, I used to, again, at primary school I used to, but I don't anymore. Um, it's something that I'd like to do. One of my friends, um, Tor Freeman, who's a brilliant author and illustrator, she's doing lots of graf graphic novels. And I love, I've got all the Hilda and the Troll um, graphic novel books. They are brilliant. If you're not a big fan of reading, um, I highly, highly recommend the Hilda and the Troll um, books. It's now a Netflix cartoon as well, which also helps you get into the books because they are brilliantly illustrated. They're really weird and wonderful stories um, and they're set out in a comic book fashion. Um, yeah, it's something that I haven't done yet, but it's something that I'd maybe like, like to look into in the future. There are a lot of work. That's what I would say. All those panels and all that writing. Um, I think it would take it, it takes me about three months to make a picture book. And I think doing a graphic novel would probably take a couple of years or so, I think. So a lot of work. But yeah, highly recommend Hilda and the Trolls. Hilda and the Trolls. So Ollie from Stanion School says, do you always colour in your illustrations? Uh, well, I know I didn't colour the ones in that I just did then, but yes, 
Um, although um, the I do lots of black and white fiction titles, so even Genie and Teeny, the new one that's coming out, it's only black and white inside. And I, you colour those in, but it's only using grey scale. So it's only black through uh, blacks and greys, but it's still kind of colouring in, it, it's shading in. So um, if you're doing a picture book, they've got to be nice and bright and colourful, I think. Yeah. Hopefully with some foil on the cover like that. So yeah, nice and bright colours I like to use, yes. Yeah. And you mentioned Jeannie and Teeny. That's a book that's coming out next month, I believe. It Can is, yes. a bit more. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's um, it's really funny. I mean, I hope it's funny. The publisher thinks it's funny, so I'm going with it. Um, yeah, so it's all about Grant the genie because he grants wishes, so he's called Grant, and he gets kicked out of genie world by the genie queen because he accidentally turns her into a birthday snake instead of a birthday cake. It all sounds a bit convoluted and silly. Um, so he gets thrown out of uh, genie world and then lands on Earth, and he, his magic lamp is all bashed and battered so he's got to find a new home which is a yellow teapot which he insists is a magic lamp but it's not it's a teapot and then he's just settling in his new teapot and a dog comes along and accidentally well he wheezes on the teapot and wakes Grant up and then he helps the dog Teeny to find his owners his home and so he comes across a lot of different things on earth that he's never seen before he gets into all kinds of scrapes there's an evil lady called Lavinia Lavender um, who's trying to turn every dog in the world purple um, and they have to escape that so it's it's really wacky and crazy and silly um, and it's fully illustrated so again it's a really good one for people that maybe aren't super keen on reading it'll really help to get you reading because it's just full of illustrations and silliness Right, a couple of random questions now. One's from um, Leia at um, Laxton Junior School. She says, do you dance? Oh, okay. She says, do you dance? Can you hear me? Do I dance? Yeah, yeah. I can, yes. Do, yeah. do I dance? Well, I, um, well, I used to. I used to when we were allowed to. <laughs> we were allowed to go out. <laughs> yes, and also when I... I was at secondary school, I did tap dancing lessons and I did salsa lessons. Ooh. Yes. So I did tap dancing lessons with um, Rosemary Ford, who used to present the Generation Game that no one will remember here. Um, so, yeah, I used to love doing tap routines, um, but I couldn't afford uh, the shoes at the time. So you couldn't really hear what I was doing. So it was a bit embarrassing. Um, everyone else had posh tap shoes and you could just hear me scuffling around the hall. Um, and yes, yeah, salsa was interesting as well. I picked that up again at um, university too. So yeah, I do dance. I wonder if Leia dances as well. Good name. I'm sure Princess she Leia. does. Yeah, I'm sure she does. She um, does. She does. Is, that it, is it true your family used to have a pom-pom factory? Do they still have it? Yes, they do. My brother um, now runs the pom-pom business in Macclesfield in Cheshire. It, was, it started in the 1800s with my great-great-great-great-grandma. Um, Lavinia and yes so they make you know those little they don't make cheerleading pom-poms they don't do those ones they make little furry pom-poms with sticky feet and um, eyes that do this a bit like the octopus octopus um, and yeah they're still making them to this day well hopefully they are I mean it's been very the last year has seen a big decline in the need for pom-poms and the demand for pom-poms yeah. but hopefully it will still keep going for a, a long time but yeah my dad ran it and now my brother runs it Ooh. so next time you see a pom-pom somewhere it's probably from the Lenton factory in Macclesfield <laughs> <laughs> you've piqued my interest with something that you said earlier um, do you grow unicorns from seeds then? How do you grow a unicorn? Ah, well, yes. I can give you an exclusive, actually. Oh, here we go. Uh, I've got what the cover's going to look like here. So this is what the publisher have sent me. This is the front and back cover. So this is how to grow a unicorn. It's all sparkly. You can see the butterflies as I mentioned. And yes, the little girl called Sarah goes to the shop, which is called Mr. Potiphar's Parlour of Plants. And she's looking for a birthday present for her gran, who is 88 and loves gardening. So she asks Mr. Potiphar for some nice, exciting seeds. And she ends up buying some unicorn seeds. Now, you're only supposed to plant one of these seeds, but she plants all 24. Wow. And so everything goes a bit awry. And then... 
the next book is going to be how to grow a dragon as well so she's going to grow some dragons from seeds as well so yeah there are magical shops where you can buy magical creature seeds fantastic that sounds it's amazing a fact, helen yes right well we've reached the end of our time now and it's been fantastic i hope you've all enjoyed that okay. and let's say a big thank you to stephen i can see lots of virtual clapping going on and lots of smiles so thank oh, you very much for joining us today and thank you for all the wonderful drawing skills that you've imparted to us no problem and thank you to all the schools that have joined in it's been really nice and what fantastic questions and i can't wait to see your drawings as well yes 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 if you if you don't have a twitter account please send your drawings to me and i'll put them on for you or you can do it directly to stephen okay well Brilliant. thank yes. you very much thank you for joining us today then stephen i'm going to leave you all with details of an exciting event this saturday with author steve cole so thank you very much and i hope you have a good rest of the day goodbye <laughs>